came from. Ha, <laughs> don't worry about that. So we're going to check out the sights and sounds down here. And hey, we're going to have a good time and hope you do too. Come on, let's go. Oh, 
sliced vegetables in three minutes because they're not frozen. New Del Monte Vegetable Classics. It's about time. Just imagine what little Tommy Edison might have made with Lego toys. Tommy Edison, you've got the craziest imagination. What does that thing do anyhow? It can record and play back sound. Record and play back sound? That's the silliest thing I ever heard. That's the silliest thing I ever heard. 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 Lego heard. toys. Heard. Toys that heard. build imagination. Welcome back, Jill and Jack. Hope you're enjoying the pre-show. Yeah, and tonight I have my special guest, Stasha from the old country, helping me co-host the show. Unfortunately, she's glued her lips together, so I sent her on a simple errand to grab me some videotape to pop in for the next segment. Stasha, where are you? Oh, there you are. Hey, Stasha, how's it going with the videotape? What the? Oh, Stasha, here we go again. Hey, Stasha, what are you doing? Who do you think you are, Janet Decay? <sighs> Only in Stasha land. Well, here's the next thing to feast your peepers on, and we'll be back. And I'm Grim Gordy, the monkey. And together we host The, the Mummy and, and the Monkey's Hairy, Scary Hangout. <laughs> yes, our live streaming horror hosted show has it all. Skits, bits, and a scary flick. That's right. So for more information on our show, go check out TheMummyAndTheMonkey.com. And, and we'll, we'll see you at the hangout. hangout. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> Hey group, do you follow The Mummy and the Monkey on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram? No? Well, why not? That's how you can find all the news about the happenings and going-ons for The Mummy and the Monkey. And if you're watching us on YouTube, remember to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. 
Hacha! Hey! <laughs> What's buzzing, cousins? Grim Gory here at uh, Motor City Nightmares. Ooh, this is gonna be scary stuff. And you can't get any more of a nightmare than what you have in front of you right now with Grim Gory and. Dr. Mortos! Yes, uh -huh. excellent. Good to see you, Grim. Good to see you, Doc. Yes, the Doc is in. <laughs> and what do you got in your arm there, Doc? Well, this is a, a creepy and cute doll. Ooh. It was just uh, gifted to the show. Oh, very so, nice. Yes, yes. She's, she's show colors, the orange and the green. So oh. We're, uh, we're enjoying that. Are you going to batter fry her and, uh, you know, batter her or deep fry her? Uh, I, don't, I don't think so. I think I'll put her in a little cage, though. Ooh. Yeah, just kind of have her in the lab. Yeah, sure, yeah. Sure. She'll make a nice little specimen, right? Yes, yeah, she does. She's already, yeah, I could do an eye transplant, maybe. Yes, yes. I, I think Janet has a few spare ones laying around. Maybe she can lend she should, them. You okay. Know. Oh, we could mummify her. Yeah. That would be good. We should mummify her like Janet. Good idea. I like that. Excellent, excellent. Oh, anyway, so, hey, when you're talking to Grim, you know, you never know what's going to come out of this mouth of mine, right? That's right. All right, so or go careful, into it. Be careful with that, or I'll have to bring you back to the lab for your upgrades. That's right. All right, excellent. Okay, Doc, well, let's run around here and see what the heck's going on here at Motor City Nightmares 2016. Yes. Let's go. <laughs> let's do this. Uh... You'll smile when you test your driving wits against Elliot Gould, Pia Zadora, Mario Andretti, and Geraldo Rivera. Join Alan Fudd and friends for Candid Camera on Wheels Wednesday. Monday, we're making America laugh. <laughs> So attention, everyone, and get ready to join forces with Major Dad. We love it at our house. Then Teddy's client goes bananas. That little scene-stealing toad. He's a monkey. Yeah, then how come he gets all the good lines? On the famous Teddy Z. He's a break. Right after Major Dad, Monday. Living undercover, living on the edge. Someone knows your secret, someone wants you dead. You could use a lifeguard, someone on your side. If looks could only kill. Tuesday, a woman home alone with a small child is brutally attacked. Nobody was going to be coming home for a long time. A woman's test of courage. On the rest, 911. What you are about to see is bizarre, unsettling, and riveting. Sparkling soft drinks. Ain't nothing like a good Mountain Dew! Ah! Hey! Hey! Steaming hot coffee. Roses are red, and how do you do? Drink four of these and woo 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 woo! Steamed or grilled hot dogs. Oh my God! That is huge! Crispy hot fresh french fries. This is the best thing I have ever put in my mouth. How about a pizza? None better anywhere. Well, gang, it's time to wrap things up here on the countdown. But don't worry, there's more show coming up. That's right, the mommy and the monkey will be here momentarily to fill your night with laughs and fright. Ha <laughs> ha. And now we must sign off. 
And uh, even though the evening was a little wonky with Stasha here, looks like her lips got unglued and she got untangled from that pesky videotape. So now that you can talk, once you finish up that popcorn, maybe you can say goodnight to me with the folks, all right? All right, let's say it. On three. One, two, three. Good. Doing something. There we go. Hey, there, there we, we go. go. <laughs> hey, welcome one and all. Welcome back one and all to the only show certified to put the Whamma Lama in your ding dong. That's right. What? You're watching the Mommy Money and, and the Monkeys, Monkeys Harry Scary, Scary Hangout. <laughs> <laughs> Episode 232, and that's, we're going to have some fun with you. That's right. I'm one of your hosts, Grim Gory, the Funky Monkey. And I'm Janet Takei, your yummy mummy. And if this is your first time on the uh, SS uh, Harry Scary Hangout, welcome aboard, shipmates. <laughs> yeah, so we hope that you have your drinks and your snacks and you're ready to join us. We have a prize giveaway that's really, really awesome. It's amazing. On top of just having an amazing show for you. And uh, we're fresh off the heels of uh, Cinema Wasteland, April 2024. Oh, yes. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to steal your thunder there. Go ahead. Oh, no. You're okay. I'm just going to real quick explain the, the prize. Oh, yes. Yeah. So this prize was brought to us by ToxicTunes.com. ToxicTunes.com. And we're going to play their promo a little bit later on in the show. But this mask is amazing. Look at that. So this will go to one lucky winner at the end of the night. And to be a part of that prize giveaway. Hi, how are you doing it? You didn't even tell me. You be active. All you have to do is... You be. You be. <laughs> All you have to do is be active in the YouTube chat if you're watching us live streaming on our YouTube channel. That's right. So just chat and make fun of the movie, chat with each other, and I will write down all of your names and put them in my big plastic shiny mummy bucket. Yummy. <laughs> yes. Oh, and really quick, a Barbara Papa to uh, the Bargain Barons for that very nice... Uh, <coughs> gift that they gave us. Thank yes. you so much for that super chat. Thank you, Bargain Barons, for the super chat. Very cool, and we've got a lot of, uh, we, we ran into a lot of fans at Cinema Wasteland. Yes, I was saying we're fresh off the heels of Cinema oh, Wasteland. Yeah. It was uh, last weekend, right? It was a couple weeks Two ago. Two weekends ago already, wow. Yeah. Time flies. We had uh, some oh. storms last week, and right. we had some issues with the power and the internet, but we're good tonight. That's so. right, so we're a little behind on things, but we're going to get on top of everything tonight, so everybody get ready uh, and uh, to have some fun. Like Janet said, grab your drinks and snacks and mm -hmm. snuggle up uh, and get ready for our what well, we think is going to be a really fun show. Yeah, tonight's movie is Scared to Death, starring Bela Lugosi. That's right. And not it's the not only, Bela Lugosi, but Bela Lugosi. It's the only film that he was in that was in color. Oh, that doesn't make it any better. But it doesn't but, make it very... It's still not a very good movie. But hey, you know, you take what you can get. When it comes to <laughs> Bela, you have to take what you can get. It's Bela, so it can't be that bad, right? It, it, it'll still be enjoyable to watch. Yes. Okay, so we want to wish a very happy Ooh. 70th birthday wow. to birthday boy Todd Andrews. Todd, oh, happy birthday, happy buddy. Happy birthday, Todd. Wow. Okay, and then some sh Cinema Wasteland shout-outs. Andrea and Ron Vickers. Yes. Sarah at Tim's Daughter and Joe. N Nadia at the Slime House. It's some punk rock place. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sounds, <laughs> Sound, sounds interesting. Yes. Bart, Sky, and Logan. Oh. Chris and Jennifer, mm -hmm. Cousin Corey, Chris and Maureen. All right. The Shook family all the way from Florida. The Shooks, yes. They shook us all day long that day. <laughs> we got all <laughs> shook up. 
Uh, movie and Toy Collector 13. Oh, from yes. Pennsylvania. He stopped on through. Matt, Brian, Paul, and Chris. Yes. Meow Zach. That's his uh, YouTube screen name. Jasmine and her brother Stefan. Oh, yeah, that's Mini right. Mini Monsters uh, Jasmine some, and Stefan. Some recent uh, new uh, acquisitions to our fan base. <laughs> yeah. Dave and Astrid, James and Jeff, and both. So, wow, very cool. Yeah, not to mention all the other folks that stopped by the booth, like Marty and Chad, our buddy Chad. Oh, yeah, the regulars. Yeah. Wolf Child and Eric Willem, you know, and all these other people. So, very yeah. cool. God, and so many other people. If I forgot your name, I'm sorry, but, uh, oh, jeez. <laughs> Tearing up, tearing the place. We just got back. You're tearing the place up. Already. I am. I am. This is a rental, you know. <laughs> this crypt. It's not expensive. The cinema too is a rental. I, yeah. Oh, I forgot to tell I you. I thought yeah. you paid off that. Oh no, no, no. Oh boy. Okay. I think actually we're squatting. I don't even think we're supposed to be in here. To be honest. I with need you. to look over the books, Greg. Nah, I don't look over any books. Just for, no, just forget okay. about that. So, anyways, we have a lot of people that watch with their mini monsters. Oh, that's right. So we're gonna start with some mini monster shoutouts, and then we're gonna Yay. do the uh, regular shoutouts. The macabre mirror. Where is that stinker at? And okay, I've got Miss Putrid Petunia you, here. I was the, trying to find Fartward. I don't know where I he went. I saw him a little bit. Huh? Did well, he like? I guess I gotta go with Burger maybe King. Maybe he's playing in the cemetery. I guess I gotta go with Old School Burger King. Okay, then. there's Old School Burger King. Yeah, he's hungry. And I've got the zombie ghoul Putrid Petunia. He's making everybody hungry out there. Okay, and uh, Mini Monsters. Mini Mon Let's start it up. Let's good. do that Mini Monster shout out the song we do. It yes. goes a little bit like this. Uh, mini Monsters. Mini Monsters. Roar, roar, roar. roar. Mini, mini Monsters. Mini, mini monsters, monsters. Here they are. are. <laughs> mini Monster shout outs to <laughs> Ramona and Layla and oh. Christian and Lucas. Whoa. Oh. And Nyla and Parker and Kenton. Hey and Hello there. Hey there. Hey there. And then oh. Emily and Noel and Trayvon too. And Miss Araya and Xander and Willow are there. <laughs> and then we've got Morgan and Julius and Adrian and Sienna. Oh, Burger King likes hey, that. Oh, kids. Oh. Dario, Hannah, Penny, Atticus, and Lil Kong. <laughs> hey. Violet, Cassandra, Carly, Isabella, Mackenzie. Whoa. Wow. And then Eva and Adeline and Gabrielle. Hi, Gabriel. Minnie. Gabrielle. <laughs> Taylor and Mac. And then Charlotte. Uh -huh. And then Mia. Okay. And then Adam and Peanut. Peanut. And Lucy and Dimitri. And last but not least, Ooh. we can't forget Baby Joe. Baby Joe. Whoa. <laughs> okay. Well, you could go over there and watch the movie, Miss yeah, Petunia. And little Bird King, you can go and, uh, you know, could give people that, uh, you know, all that good food you make. All right, Perfect. so let's see who the big monsters are watching. Oh, it's time for the big monsters. The the, 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 the monster kids, as it were. Woo, all right. Magic Macabre Mirror. Woo. Magic Macabre Mirror. Tell, tell me, tell me, me who be here. Oh, yeah. Raymond, KB, Bruce, Sputnik, Rich, Jenny, uh, James Muscarella, I'm not oh. a child. There's Connie Cleary, Mofe Chen, the Bargain Barons are oh. here. Hack Editor, Watson Family, the Horror Garden. Ooh. David Hayes, Mark, and John, and Ron. Sears James. Okay, let's see. Gary Smith, Jonathan Jackson, Paul Two, Mark Allen, Amanda Childers, Whoa. Vicky, Denise, Jeffrey, Pastor of Muppets, Ron Brunty, Ed Verge, Paul Buser, Daryl C., John Biggins, Hello. Marty, Sandra, the Bone Jangler Whoa. is here. Thea, and Mike, and Eric, and Tuff. Oh. So many. Kirk Harrington. We can't forget Kirk. Very cool. And then the Shooks are here. Hey! And Lawrence is here. And the birthday boy's here, Todd. Oh, awesome. Awesome. And, and you know, another uh, really uh, cool thing that happened mm -hmm. when we were at Cinema Lake Wasteland a couple weekends ago is yeah. that uh, Tim Gross stopped by our table and we got to meet his daughter, Sarah. Oh, yes. And she she Sarah's instantly became awesome. a big fan of ours. Yes, she's a sweetheart. So it was really a pleasure to meet her. And if she's watching tonight... Hello, Sarah, or whatever you're watching, if you're yes. watching this. Hi, Sarah, how you doing? Yes, <laughs> hi, Sarah. It was great meeting you, sweetie. All right, so we're going to start the, up the movie pretty soon now, right? Ah, uh, if you want to, <laughs> if you want to go there. But yeah, we have a jam-packed show. We uh, and have is a movie. This, does this have sound effects? It has sound effects and, uh, and a Saxon sighting, of course. Oh, so let's see if we so can find... Uh, it has all the accoutrements, if you will, of a hairy, scary hangout. We're back in full force, baby, that's right. There you go, it's good to be back. So buckle up, buttercups. Here we go with part one of Scared to Death. Actually, that happened like on the 15th last <laughs> of April, right? When they're IRS. Yeah, I'm everyone sorry. was scared to death on tax day. It's perfect timing for this movie. <laughs> right here on The, the Mummy, Mummy and the Monkeys. Monkeys. Harry, scary hangout. Woo, scared to death. Let's all dance and sing the polka, tra-la-la, la-la-la. 
Oh, please. She's at work, Doctor. There are no marks of violence on the body. What do they suspect? Poison? Have they any idea? My understanding is, Doctor, that the authorities are entirely at sea as to how she was killed. They know why, but... Uh, and they also have the fellow who killed her. But... Yes, yes, that doesn't matter. That's none of our business. Our business is to find out what killed her. And yet... One often wonders... What's that? What could have caused the last thought that was cut off by death? Peanut butter. If it was spoken now, what would it be? It's your here. You found me at last. But you know what you kill me. I warn you. Don't come and I'll skip. No, don't, please. Don't. No, no, I told you I didn't want the bandage. But why, Laura? Why are you so opposed to the bandage? Back off, Jack! Does it remind you of something, perhaps? What do you mean? Oh, nothing, Laura, nothing. Now, won't you lie down again and let me complete the examination? You're nasty. You're a sick girl, you know, in a highly nervous condition. I want to know what you meant by saying the bandage reminded me of something. If you don't know, how should I? You don't fool me for a minute, Doctor. I know how you feel about me. Do you, Laura? Then I wish you'd tell me, for I don't know. I don't know how I feel about you at all. You're clever, Doctor. But I'm wise to you and that fool of a son of yours. How long have you been married to Ward now? None of your business. Too long. And why don't you give him his divorce? He's asked you often enough. I'll give him a divorce when I'm good and ready. I see. I'm not afraid of anything he can do, or you, or anyone else. <coughs> What's that? Your heart's beating like a trick hammer. I must warn you that this high state of nervous tension... What's that noise? It's only a branch tapping against the window. Now, my dear Laura, if you want me to help you, you must tell me what it is you fear. I told you I'm not afraid of anything. I know what's going on here. Someone's trying to scare me out, but it won't work, see? What up? Here I am, and here I'll stay until I rot. I'm afraid there's more truth in that than you suspect. Laura, I must ask you not to cause Father any more trouble. I don't want you threatening him, you hear? You too. You're so cute. I'm sure you want to be alone. You're not going to make him pay for my mistake. What are you going to do about it? I'd like to. You'd like to choke me, wouldn't you, Ward? But you haven't got the nerve. Here. This is the only thing you ever gave me. You can have it back. The next time I see you, remind me not to talk to you, will you? She's right. I gave her this when we were married. It's the only gift that ever passed between us. Ward, what do you propose to do about Laura? What can I do? She won't leave me. She won't give me a divorce. Well, things can't go on this way, you know. Dad, what is the matter with her? What do you think is wrong? I don't know. She wasn't this way until she began getting those letters from abroad, you remember? 
Yes, it had something to do with those letters. But you would have thought that when they stopped coming, that... What is it, little bit? That's a patient, Doctor, a Mrs. Williams. Williams? That's the name she gave, and she's decked out like she's going to a horse show. <laughs> I can't see anyone today. Ask her to make another appointment. Dad, please don't let this happen interfere with your practice. Oh, very well. Send her in in a few minutes. Sure, Doctor. Oh, yeah. That Bill Raymond's waiting. Do you want to see him? Who's he? That private cop who's always hanging around, just hoping somebody gets murdered. <laughs> oh, yes. He's probably come for his check. Take care of it, will you, Ward? Yes. A little bit. Yes. This for you. Gee. Thanks, Mr. Waring. But this belongs to Mrs. Van E, doesn't it? Not anymore. It's all yours. She won't get sore, will she? I don't want to have any trouble with her. You know how she is. I know. We all know, Little Bit. And I want to thank you for your patience. Run along now, Little Bit. Yes, Doctor. Adios, amigos. You made a fatal mistake, my boy, in marrying Laura. Yes, I know. You don't suppose I'm going to stand for it forever, do you? No, I don't. And I don't think it will be necessary. Do you have a plan? I think it'll be better if you leave everything to me. From the day a mysterious caller came to see Dr. Van E. Oh, yes, I remember now, Mrs. Williams. I spoke to you this morning on the telephone. I'm sorry, but I can't tell you any more now than I told you then. Oh, naturally, Doctor. I did not mean to imply that there were any abnormal goings on here. I assure you that is not, Mrs. Williams, nor will there be. Yeah, right. Uh, nevertheless, Doctor, the way you were described to me and the way your place was described to me, I am certain that I am in the right place. May I ask from whom you obtained these descriptions? From a friend, Doctor, a mutual friend. Blow it, Beth, the woman I love. Oh, brother. Can't we be friends? Stop tracking your big flat feet after me wherever I go. I've got things to do. Oh, gee, it's wonderful just to see you around, busying yourself, the little housewife. I never knew the cop who didn't love to stand around and watch other people work. <coughs> Mrs. Williams, it's obvious from your conversation that you've come into possession of certain facts concerning my past. I know of only one person who could have given you that information. Brad Pitt. Yes. And it was my belief, yes, even my hope, that person was dead. But let me say that even if that person were alive, I should not submit to blackmail from you or from anyone else. You show great courage, Doctor, for one in your unusual position. There has been no question of blackmail. I came here seeking your cooperation, which you have refused to give. So let us call the matter closed. What do you say we cut the chit-chat? A-hole! Au revoir, Doctor. Then came the sinister pair. <laughs> My little guardian of the door, Ben. If you had waited another second, Inigo and I should have kicked the door in. Yes, sir. That's due to the rudest, crudest dude I ever met. Sir, there is an air of inquiry about you that immediately offends my deepest nature. There is something suggesting Scotland Yard, the French Sûreté, the Italian Carabinieri, the Turkish Polizei, and other Minions of the law. Short, sir. I think you're a cop. Yeah. How'd you know? I believe I'm in the home of Dr. Joseph Van E. Yes, sir. I mean, sirs. Oh. Do not be polite to Inigo. He's only offended by it. Run along, Inigo. Make yourself at home. We got a nice tree in the yard, but it ain't got no coconuts. Ow, ow, ow! Mission out of the Russian, the Iran. My other thing is that I don't My little friend Inigo is deaf and dumb. He cannot hear and he cannot speak. But he reads the lips. And I would advise you to say nothing to annoy him. For his temper is short, indeed. Please, stop! 
this, I presume, is Dr. Bernice's private office. Yes, sir. But I really should announce you. My dear girl, if I allowed myself to be announced, I doubt I would be received anywhere. I'm sorry. Really, I am. But the doctor won't see anybody without an appointment. Appointment? I have had an appointment with him these 20 years. What? He will see me. Doctor, doctor, somebody's coming! My dear doctor, truthfully can it be said that your house is your castle, protected by your countless slaves. So it is you, Leonard. I was warned you might appear like one of your own illusions out of nowhere. Oh! My dear Joseph, you have not changed a bit. Have you met my friend, Mr. Raymond? Raymond? Oh, Raymond. No doubt a relative of the great magician of the same name. Mr. Raymond is our private patrol officer. He keeps an eye on the premises for us. And other comings and goings. <coughs> a very good idea, my dear Joseph, to have a private bodyguard at your beck and call. Well, you fellas are old friends, I can see that. Oh, yes. Old friends. Well, then maybe you'd like to be alone to talk over old times. A very good suggestion. Thank you, Mr. Heyman. I won't be far away, Doc. <clears throat> well, so long, Mr. Leonard. Don't pull any more little men out of your hat. <laughs> well, Leonard, what brings you to me after all this time? The long arm of coincidence, my dear Joseph. Simply the long arm of coincidence. Aren't you glad to see me again? No, I can't say that I am. You with your foreign background and I, what are we two in common? Always truthful, Cousin Joseph. As when we were young men, you might have said no and saved your career. But you prefer to tell the truth and ruin yourself. What do you want here, Leonard? A few days' hospitality, my dear Joseph. Nothing more. Is that too much for one cousin to ask of another? Yes. Remember, we agreed not to think of each other as cousins again, me and I. By God's, my dear Joseph. And I'm willing to forget. And I suggest that you do the same. You've grown older, Leonard, but there may be something in what you say. I don't want to hold a grudge. But don't do anything that will make me regret my action. Okey-dokey. You have my promise. Now, if you will show to my room. Oh, I should say, I have a traveling companion from whom I am inseparable. Who? Inigo, a dwarf, one of the little men. He became very much attached to me when he lost his master. You do not object. What good would that do? How true. Very well. You may have the room next to my daughter-in-law. I know you'll like that. Oh, yes. Swing! The lady, who I'm told, has an utmost horror of having her eyes blindfolded. A phobia of most interesting origin, I dare say. Something to think about. You're sick as I is! Gross fast, dude. Too gross. Thank you. 
And then there's more movie maker dudes. Henrik. Hey kids. Hey, Henrik Rico. Movie maker extraordinaire. Ooh, comical books. Whoa. Waiting. Oh. You know, we're not even halfway through the day. Uh, Psycho so Ape. I'll get there, but I don't want to be like totally dark. Psycho Ape. Get you one. Ooh. Yeah. Extremely tasty. Oh, okay. Good to see you too. All right. Good to see you, man. Pretty sure. Uh, everybody should get a little wolf child in their life. Oh yeah. Oh, they do. Child, you know, have to have a little bit of that in your life. I do my best. And he even cleans up after himself. You don't have to carry a bag around with him. Oh, that's right. No. Yeah. <laughs> He's a good kind of wolf you want yeah. Yeah. running around. With yeah. He's very conscious about his kaiju. That's right. <laughs> very conscious. <laughs> Patty Mullen is here from Frank and Hope. Oh, Patty Mullen, And there's, there's a Troma's back there too. Let's go let's go say hi to Troma. Yeah, that'll work. That'll work, yeah. What are they selling here? Lloyd Kaufman burgers. Oh, James and JR. There he is. Oh, you're good, you're good. We don't want to interrupt you. The man, the myth, the legend, JR Bookwalter. And you've got your movie screening tonight. That's right. That's awesome. Super fan Gary Smith. Yes. We see them in their natural habitat. The Wasteland. All right, everybody, thanks for joining us on our uh, Cinema Wasteland walk around for, uh, what is it, uh, April 2024 show. All right. All right, thanks for watching. Bye, guys. And to. now we're back. There we go. Now <laughs> we're back. Oh boy, this thing it's not it's not rolling like I need it to. All right. Hey, hey welcome back everyone to the Mummy the Monkeys Harry Scary Hangout mm -hmm. episode 232. <laughs> yes, we watched part 1, part 1 of uh, Scared to Death starring mm. Bela Lugosi. And so far I'm just bored to death, but hey, you know. <laughs> that should really be the title of this Maybe film. that was, was maybe Beastie Yucca Flats came out. No, I was like actually way after this. No, so. Beastie Yucca Flats is way worse. Anyway, so, it, but you know, who needs that? You know, we're here to hang out with each other, keep each other company, and... Uh, we're going to get through it together. Enjoy each other's company is what I'm Yes. Saying. So, okay, so what's up next? Our next segment is the Snack Toys segment. Ooh, that's and right. We have a lot of fan mail we're going to open throughout the show and uh, promos and other stuff we're going to play throughout the show. That's right, um, but now it's time for the Mummy the Monkey Snack Toys. Yes. New yummy snacks. Old movie facts. That's right. And, I, uh, you guys could put in the YouTube uh, chat if you're watching us live what you're snacking on right now. And what do we got? I know we got one thing from our buddy Joe Francic, another uh, friend of ours who stops by at the table. And uh, for uh, every almost every show he comes to, he stops at Grandpa's Cheese Barn. Yes. And picks <laughs> us up some uh, some treats. And uh, he got us a couple different bags. 
uh, that don't exist anymore because we ate them because it was two weeks ago. Yes, it was yummy trail mix. Yes, trail mix things and some other stuff. But, but this you, one is especially for me. You've got chocolate banana chips. Chocolate covered banana chips. Chocolate banana chips. And then another uh, show regular, Greg Tominski, mm -hmm. also known as the Snack Master General, stopped by. He did. And, and brought us a big old box of stuff. He brought us a snack skit. A whole box of stuff. And there's another a note snack. in here, too. Oh, boy. So we're going to read the note and show the goodies. And uh, um, then we're going to get into the, uh, the factoids or the snacktoids of the movie. Well, that's right. Okay, it says, Greetings, Janet and Grim and Crypt Kitties. It was great seeing you at Cinema Wasteland. Mm. Always a fun time. Wish I had more time to spend there, but mm. it was fun anyways. I hope you and the Crypt Kitties enjoy this little snack box of yummy treats. Different. I even enclosed a couple nutritional drinks, too. Oh, mm. Can you wish my favorite monkey happy birthday on the 15th and happy anniversary to your alter egos the same day? Oh, well, I guess so. <laughs> well, happy belated. That's Keep right. up the great work making our Fridays the best night of the week. Peace out, Snack Master General Greg. Happy belated. Aww. To your favorite monkey on the 15th. And what was the other thing? It was an uh, anniversary? Yeah. Okay. So, okay, there are, oh, there's some chips what here. Are some kettle chips. Oh, I love me some, oh, salt. There's uh, Reese's. Oh, those are good. Gimme, gimme, gimme. Yeah, there you go. There's Reese's. Oh. There's uh, cookies. These are, these are chocolate. These are peanut butter. Peanut butter covered there's pretzels. treats for the kitties. I'll take those too. I'm, I'll eat there's anything. There's uh, Oreo cookie things. Belgian chocolates. Famous. What's that say? Little oh. Rice crispy Treat oh, thing. Oh, I thought that said something else. That's famous Amos. Oh, jeez. Okay, we will. Uh, <laughs> there's um, Cheetos. I'm a happy monkey. There's, what is this? Nutritional shake. Oh, it's a... Uh, well, well, like, in, Mama Monkey can have, like, can it, It's like poop, poop milk, right? It's like chocolate milk, but with like vitamins. Jamie Curtis poop milk. Maybe something like that. Activia. And chocolate rice crispy treats. Wow. Okay, you wow. know what? I'm gonna try this chocolate rice rice crispy treat. I think I might be in the mood for some chips. Some some This is great. Some tato chips. Thank you, Greg. Yeah, and thanks, then Snack let's Master see. General. Throw this into Sears the, uh, James is having pretzels and peanut butter. Oh yes, that's right. Discuss what you're eating amongst yourself out there. And then uh, John Biggin says, at Grandpa's Cheese Barn you can eat all the free samples. <laughs> oh. they, I guess they give out a lot of samples. Um, Raymond's having wild turkey. <laughs> well, I know. That's not food. <laughs> Chocolate ice cream. That's what Michael's having. Mm. Okay, so All right, I'm gonna open have up. a bite of this. And you have yeah. a bite of that. Oh, boy. Kettle, chips, sea salt, and cracked pepper. Mm -hmm. Lois is having okay. chocolate chip cookies. Mmm. 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 That's good. These kettle chips are real good. Okay, um, so this movie is called Scared to Death. It's uh, from 1947. Yeah. So, it's an oldie. It's an oldie, but it was Bela Lugosi's, the only film that was in color that he was in. Yeah. Um, and everyone knows him as Dracula, the Universal Films Dracula. The Consumit Dracula. Also Plan 9 from Outer Space. Uh. He was in that for a little bit. Um... He was also a stage actor. He started out on stage, and he was a Hungarian immigrant. So he came over oh. here and Is that why he was an actor? Because he was hungry and he wanted to that was, get yeah. money to eat? Mm. Uh, he was hungry from Hungary. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, he was in the movie White Zombie. That was a good movie, too. Oh, boy. Well, um, i got to be a white zombie. The Black man. Hat. That's an amazing movie. The Raven from 1935. And a Son of Frankenstein from 1934. You think they call it White Zombie and Black Cat because the the movies were in black and white and they had nothing, you know? Maybe. George Zuko's in this. He plays the one doctor guy with the glasses. Yes. George Zuko's a great character actor. Well, he was a great character actor. He's he still acted around. for two decades. So for 20 years, he did a lot of acting. Um, throughout the 1940s, like The Mummy's Hand, 1940. Uh, the Mummy's Tomb, 1942, where he plays... Let me, I'm going to try to read my handwriting here. Andoheb? He played like an Egyptian character. Mm. Dead Men Walk, 1943. The Mummy's Ghost from 1944. Ooh. Uh, he played the high priest in The Mummy's Ghost. But unfortunately, in 1951, he had a major stroke, and he was in a nursing home for the rest of his life. Oh. So, yeah, his acting career... And his life was, was cut short, his quality of life. Thank you, Brian, for the super chat. Brian, thank you for the super chat. 
But yeah, we like George. We like a lot of the movies he was in. Okay, and Molly Lamont, she is the lady who is scared to death in this movie. The one that looks like Sigourney Weaver. She does look a lot like Sigourney Weaver. Like, a l I could see, I don't know, she just reminds me of her. Sigourney. Um, the, she was in The Devil Bath's Daughter from 1946. Uh, um, she played Ellen Masters Morris. Or, I'm uh, sorry, I, her name, okay, I, I messed come this on, all up. I'm trying, I, my handwriting needs to get better here. Ellen Masters Morris. You need to eat another piece of something while you talk. This whole show is I know, I'm segment, totally butchering these facts This segment's here. supposed to be about you eating food and talking at the same time. I know. I can't chew gum and talk at the same well, time. Well, then it's not snack toys then. Right. right. Anyway. She was in over 50 films. She retired from acting in 1951. She married, moved to the USA, and she remained active in the local theater she was in, like, stage plays and stuff like that. So... But she lived a long life. She lived to be 89 years old. Wow. That's the pretty, actress. That's, that's a good one. Yep. Uh, so cool. So she plays... And that's it? That, that's all I have for that's the... That's all the snack toys you got? That's all that I have. Oh. <laughs> that's all I wrote down. If I wrote down any more, I wouldn't be able to read it very well Well, anyway. we got another super chat coming to the room. <laughs> Ravens, thank you for the $20 super chat. Yeah, that was very, very nice. Thank you. Start over, says Mark. Okay, let's start <laughs> Take it from the top. No, but, you know, I don't know if I have any bleeps in this one because it's from a couple years ago. But, 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 next time we show this in a few more years from now, if we're still around doing this, I already know. I, I can't wait because this has a lot of opportunities for bleeps. Yeah. So, but that's good. That'll be a little bit different next time you see it, you know. Yeah, we first right. hosted this movie several, maybe two or three years ago. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we'll have to tweak it and add but more stuff to it yeah there's there's plenty of it. oh we got another super chat dane stotzer thank you for the super chat yes and of course we saw the stotzers out there as well they came through. oh yes the stotzer family dane and linda always mm -hmm. lovely to see them man it was it was like a big love fest at all you know cinema wasteland for us is just like that you know some people refer to that convention as like a demented family reunion yes and we will have a lot of fun at the October show. Oh my gosh, that yes. might even be bigger. Because, because it's going to be so nice to see Tom Sullivan back. That's the big announcement that yes. Cinema Wasteland made this the week. The bookbinder of the dead. He made the props for the first two Evil Dead movies. Cinema, yeah, or somewhere. <laughs> Tom Sullivan. Tom Sullivan and Pat Reese will return yes. to Cinema Wasteland this October, y'all. They'll have that room where they have all the Evil Dead so props that he there, worked on. The evil, me. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Not, where they have all the props at. Yes, the Evil Dead Museum. Yes. So that's great that that's going to be there again. Yeah, I can't wait. That's going to be a lot of fun. So that's right. It ain't over yet. So they're coming back, baby. If you missed them, come check it out this October. And guess who will be there? So us. Okay. We'll be there too to, to hang out with everybody. So all Woo! right. Let's, uh, I guess, auger into part two of Scare to Death. All and right. And we'll be back after this, y'all. <laughs> Enjoy. Maybe. <laughs> Cousin Leo. Yes. <laughs> My dear Ward. How flattering that you remember me. Well, how could I ever forget you? What are you doing here? A chance visit to my boy. I wanted to see the old homestead again. You've seen father? Yes, and he received me with open arms. In a manner of speaking. Oh, I don't mind telling you. You came at a very bad time. We're, uh, we're having some trouble. My uh, boy, trouble and I are... <coughs> Like this. I presume you refer to the charming lady in the room next to mine, your wife, I believe. Uh, yes, uh, Laura. I haven't met her, but I'm looking forward to the pleasure. I'd like to talk to you for a moment. All right. Perhaps you can help us. By doing what, my boy? You've been everywhere. You were caught in Europe during the war. I'd like to show you something. You may be just the person I'm looking for. I can be of any service. Did you ever hear of a dance team called Rene and Lorette? I don't think so, my boy. And then again, there must have been such a team. Look. Rene and Lorette, the dance of the green mask in the green room in Paris. The green room. Hey! Yes. Oh. The face of the man does seem slightly familiar. May I ask, where you got this photograph? 
I, uh, 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 the mate, Lilibet, found it in Laura's room and turned it over to me. Oh, well, my boy, I'm afraid I can't help you. I played the green room on several occasions, but never with these people. In fact, I don't seem to remember them at all. And I appeared in many clubs during the occupation. I'm sure the girl behind the green mask in this picture is Laura. How can you be sure? Who can ever be sure what's behind the mask? No, that's the first time I heard that. If the people in this photograph could suddenly come to life, I'd like to know who the man is. It can be anyone, my friend. Anyone. In this makeup, it might be even I. I wish you wouldn't joke about it. This is very serious, of course. But let us say you found out who the man in the photograph is. What then? I have an idea that if the man in this picture were to show up, I'd find out I wasn't married to Laura at all. Hmm. Think over what I've asked you. It'll be to your advantage. Certainly, my boy. I will give it every consideration. And perhaps something will occur. Who knows? Uh, don't you want to leave the photograph with me uh, for my further study? It might be the very incentive that my memory needs. No, thanks. Uh, I'll keep it. As you wish. Well, no, you're not excused. Now you may leave. Lorette, Lorette. I'll make a bet the man in green will get you yet. What is that? What are you talking about? surprise was in store for me the following morning. Who is it? It's me, ma'am. What do you want? The afternoon mail. You wanted to know when it arrived. Was there anything for me? Yes, ma'am. Put it under the door. I can't. It's a package. You better not be using my hair crimper on your bad place again. What's in it? I don't know. It's against postal regulations to open other people's mail. That's never stopped you before. I'd like to know what you mean by that remark, ma'am. Oh, shut up and get out. Don't you want me to help you open No, it? I don't. Get out. It's addressed to you in green ink with a warning. Look out for the man with the green mask. Oh, what's in the box? You don't understand. I'm supposed to be here. That's what I'm being paid for. Paid? Yeah. You see, I'm Bill Raymond, private cop in this neck of the woods. I was hoping we'd have a little murder or something happen around here so as I could solve it and get my old job back at Sentinel Homicide. Nothing personal, of course. Who told you to say these things to me? Well, nobody. Nobody said nothing to me. I, I was just waiting around outside to see Dr. Van Ee and I heard you yell. So you're a friend of that crazy doctor and his son. Crazy? I, I wouldn't exactly say that, ma'am. The doc's a pretty good egg. You wouldn't want anyone to say you was crazy, even if you... You can go back and tell them I'm not afraid of being murdered by you or them or anyone else. No, I don't guess you are, ma'am. Still and all, if, if you was to get murdered and, and I was to find out who done it, it'd be kind of a break for me. That don't, that don't be, Mr. Kosho. I wouldn't say that to you, lady. 
even if I knew what it meant. Excuse me while I whip this out. Now will you get out? All right, all right. I can take a hand. Nice little bedroom companion you've got there. Get out. I'll go, I'll go, but don't think I'll come running next time you yell. I'll know it's a fake. I became afraid and my mind started to crack. You're spending the night with Fred Jarvan, male prostitute. Lily Beth, my melancholy baby, where are you? I don't know what you're talking about. You lying, you go through my things. What'd you do with the picture? Where is it? I didn't see it. That's the last time you put your hands on me. I'll give you one more chance and then I'll... I told you I don't know where the picture is and I don't know what you're talking about. You all the time going through my things, opening my mail, rapping on my door at night. Now you're blaming me. I've never touched anything of yours. You've got my robe on now. Where'd you get that? I was just trying it on. Mr. Ward gave it to me. He said you didn't want it anymore. I'll tell you when there's something I don't want. <laughs> How do you do? Shut up. It's only a dummy. Uh, a dummy? Where'd you get that thing? I suppose you're going to tell me you don't know anything about that either. <sighs> oh, I bet it was in the box. In the box I brought up for you, that's what. There were no stamps on it. How did it get in the mail? I don't know. The doorbell rang, and I thought it was a mailman. I opened the door, and it was sitting there on the stoop. You're lying. No, I'm not. I don't mind telling a lie now and then, but I'm not lying now, honest. That's a lie! That is a... That is a... Trying to scare me out. I'm not leaving. No. But I am. You come here. You and Mr. Ward are pretty thick, aren't you? Thick? Yes, thick like your head. He's fallen in love with someone else. Who's she? I don't know. It's not me. I know it isn't you. I know all the signs. He's fallen in love with some simple-faced... men. There's always a way to get even with them. I've got to find that picture. Otherwise, they won't know what he looks like. To send it to the police. He won't dare touch me. Who do you mean, the man in the picture? Have you seen him? Maybe I have, and maybe I haven't. Maybe I saw him go behind the thicket, or through the wall, or under the house. He's here in the house? Yes. I let him in. I let him in. He was waiting outside to get to you, Miss Laval. Miss Laval. <coughs> There's nothing safe from your prying eyes, is there? You think you know everything, don't you? I know why you're afraid, and I know what you've done. No, I'm not so thick. I'm not as thick as you think I am, Miss Laval. That head's supposed to be you, kind of a calling card. I'll remind you that. Why, you! <laughs> Cotton-headed ninny muggins. Oh, I'm afraid. I'm afraid. Where are you hiding? Oh, goody, goody. I've done a good thing, and I get a prize. Is that anything to be playing football with? Where did you get that, Raymond? Miss Fanny chucked it at me like I was a pass receiver for a football team. And I'm all out of practice. Let me see it. This comes from a group of anatomical specimens that was locked in a room in the cellar. How did you happen to get it? That's what I'm trying to tell you. There I was, outside her door, strictly minding my own business, understand? Listening at the keyhole. I don't think that belongs in the realm of your duties, Raymond. But, Doc, there were screams inside. You gotta admit, it's within the longitude of my profession to make with an investigatory reaction there, too. What am I saying? I don't understand how this head got from its locked room in the cellar. Well, the way I heard it, it was sent to Mrs. Van E. That was rather a gruesome practical joke. Why, your anatomical locker hasn't been open for ages. I think you once told me you'd lost the only key to it. I know. There is no key to my knowledge. Why, that thing didn't walk out of the room by itself. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Know-it-all. Doc, I'm worried. What about, Raymond? Well, now, take this head business. The whole thing don't seem hardly serious to me. I think that 
If it's all the same to you, I better be checking along to other duties. You're not afraid, are you, Raymond? Who, me? Scared? <laughs> it's just that I don't think that there's gonna be any murder here done after all. That's too bad. Well, it's not your fault, I guess. It's just not my lucky day, that's all. Thank you, Lilibet. Oh, Miss Lilibet, have you a little more coffee in the kitchen? What happened to the three gallons I already gave you today? Lilibet! What you need is a good, strong, steady man who, who is always hanging around, tracking up my floors and things. What's that on your shoe? Looks like cobwebs from out of the cellar. What were you doing in the basement? It could have been the attic. Bill Raymond, you're holding out on me. What are you up to? Up to? Yes. Who asked you to go poking around in the cellar? It was in performance of my duty. What duty? What did you find? Absolutely nothing. That's what makes me so disgusted. Too bad about you. You know, Lily Beth, I think somebody around here is just kidding. They don't mean business at all. Why don't you just wait around and see? Say, if you've got any inside dope, I wish you'd tip me off. If I'm ever going to get back to Central and prove I'm a good detective, i got to have some clues. Yes, I was scared. Scared of my life. I expected big things of that ghoulish looking guy, but he ain't delivered neither. I should say in a way you were entitled to expect big things from him. Leo was once confined in this house when it was an institution for the insane. Nerves. You know. Do tell. Well then, he must know his way around the place, huh? I understand why he was here. He engineered an immense number of secret passages through which the guards could keep an eye on the inmates at night. Finally, he took one of these passages into the outside world, and we heard later he'd been seen in Europe. Ah, Europe. That's where history is being made today. Gee, I'd love to travel and... Well, perhaps you'll have an opportunity someday. Not if something don't happen around here pretty soon to make me famous. Uh, that Lily Beth. I've been trying to get a cup of coffee off of her all day. She don't care what happens to my metabolism. Metabolism. That's a good word. I wonder what it means. <laughs> right away. Mm -hmm. Oh, my ovaries. I'm Tony. I'm Greg. And we're watching the Mummy, Mummy the Monkey, the Monkey's Harry Scary, Scary Hangout. Hangout. You need another bite. Woo! Happy birthday to me. Happy birthday to me. Happy birthday, dear Yashu. Happy birthday to me. Wow, my dupe was another year older today. I can't believe it. A whole year passed by just like that. Oh, by the way, sorry you couldn't sing happy birthday to me to me on account of your uh, laryngitis you got from your yodeling lessons earlier today. <laughs> Hey, thanks a lot, Stasha, for the, the beautiful uh, dinner you made me, but the kibosky and sauerkraut, the delicious cake you made me here, and oh boy, uh, I can't think uh, anything else you got for your dear old dad on a special day? You do? Oh yeah, what? Okay, sure. Oh, <laughs> oh, check it out, I wonder what this is. Oh, wow! An official Goulardy turn blue color changing mug. Wow, that's pretty cool. I never ever heard of that before. I didn't even know you can do something like that. Let's see this thing. Oh man, check it out. Oh, look at that. Look how cool. It's got Goulardi's mug on the mug and everything, huh? Yeah, color changing. I gotta see that here. Let me put a little bit of this uh, juice in here <laughs> and give it a shot ski. Let's try. <coughs> Excuse me. <my. laughs> All right, 
Where's the color changing? I'm waiting. All right, when's it gonna start turning blue? I don't see anything turning blue, do you? Oh man, what a piece of garbage. It's not worth the capooses it was printed on. You know what, Stasha? I sure hope you have your receipt so you can get your money back for this piece of trash. Turn blue color changing mug indeed. Maybe I can pour some more liquid in it. Hmm. Well, happy birthday to me, I guess. Nostrovia! <laughs> well, looks like old Yashu's gonna be blue in the face for his birthday. Be sure to tune in next time for more misadventures of Stasha from the old country. Hello, boys and ghouls. This is Eric, Uncle Piggers, creator of Toxic Tunes. I specialize in creepy, kooky, spooky, macabre art that I put on my t-shirt line. I'm always creating new t-shirts every month. I've also got patches, stickers, monster masks, calendars, Artwork, scare freshener, pill. Oh, I got so much stuff I can't even keep my eyes straight. Just come to Toxic Tunes and see with your own eyes where it's Halloween every day. <laughs> and stay tuned for more of Mummy and the Monkey. I love these two. <laughs>so you can check them out at toxictunes.com. There's a cool mummy mask, and we've got Ooh. one on display right here. And we're giving <laughs> this bad boy away tonight. That's yes. right. So if you're in the chat. So if you're in the chat commenting about the movie, commenting about whatever, I'm writing your names down, and I'm putting them in my big shiny bucket here. <laughs> my big plastic mummy bucket. And we're going to pick one lucky winner at the end of the night. And the one lucky winner that we do pick at the end of the night has to claim their prize. They have to email us so we can uh, figure out how to send it out to you. That's right. <laughs> and uh, they can email. Oh, here it is. Email Our us. email is themummyandthemonkey at gmail.com. Easy. So that, there's our email. Easy to remember there. Remember themummyandthemonkey at gmail.com. Yes. It's a game simpler than that. And Pretty um, easy. Next week, or next show, we're going to do another Eric or uh, Toxic Tunes giveaway. Yeah, for the next couple shows, actually. Uh, we'll have some art prints to give away next wow. week. Wow. All so, kinds of cool stuff. Some fun stuff. And then so, he, he gave us uh, some buttons. Yes, for, and, us, for to us to don on our I, And I have a, a, t a couple t-shirts I'm going to model later. That's right. So all kind of cool <laughs> stuff. Thanks to Toxic Tunes. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Very Thank cool. you, Toxic Tunes. Supporter of the show. So you should be a supporter of theirs, okay? That's all we ask is check them out and maybe really pick cool. up a shirt or two or something. He's got all kinds of stuff. Really creepy, cool artwork. We yeah, love original it. stuff. The guy is uh, prolific. He's very good. Even Slash from Guns N' Roses wears the guy's stuff, mm -hmm. amongst other rock and rollers. A lot, a lot of celebs wear his shirts. Yeah. So, pretty cool. Thanks, man. Super cool. All right. Now, uh, right. we got some mail. We're going to open up some mail. Yes, we do have some more fan mail. There's um, a package here <gasps> that's... That showed up all the way from Canada. From Canada? All the way from Canada. Specifically from Regina, <laughs> I believe. Regina, yes. It came all the way from Regina. And I wonder who that came from. Who sent us a package from Regina, Canada? Mm, I wonder. Mm. It's our pals, the Bargain Barons. The Bargain Barons. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Our YouTuber friends, the Bargain Barons, and they have an amazing YouTube channel where they go out looking for really cool antiques, and they look for bargains at yard sales and estate sales and things like that. Yes, and there'll be a little, uh, they do a little promo for us. It'll be at the end of uh, the next, uh, you know, part of... Uh, part three. Of, yep. uh, so check that. Right after that, you'll see a little promo they did for us. It'll be on a little bit later. Of scare, yeah, of, of the movie tonight. So anyway. So there's a box here of some, oh, some things. What is in this box? Let this? me see. Ooh. Is it food? Open that one, Can Grim. I eat that? Looks like a big hamburger or something in here. <laughs> I, I don't think it's food, Grim. Oh, yeah, I know what these are. Ooh. They're not sliders, but they're slides. 35 millimeter film. 
Whoa, mystery the canisters film. Canisters of mystery film. Oh, look, there's uh, all kinds of slides. Oh, my lord, it's, they're falling out. Hold on. Ooh, thank you. Oh, they must know how much we love this stuff. Ooh, there's more film. I don't think we could show this on the show. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Maybe not. No, it's cool. No, but, but it's really cool. It's old film stuff. This is this is some really cool stuff. Well, thank you. Thank you so much, Bargain Bear. A Bears. roll of film. Is that? Wow. Oh, that's 16 millimeter. Oh my God! And you, yeah, that's really. That neat. I, well, I'll have to figure out how to convert that. Well, we got us. We got. We can watch it. Oh, it's a western. Western Blazing Guns, 1950. Ooh, there we go. Some uh, rescued reels here. <laughs> I'm looking at people doing something. I don't know what they're doing. It looks like, it looks legal though. Uh, swimming or something. There's Another like film photos. canister. Mystery wow, film. Wow, this is really really cool. Super cool. Wow. Well, thank you, Rob and Karen. That's very sweet. Thank you. And lots of newspaper. <laughs> and of course, we yeah. love we love watching your show. We watch all the, the episodes. As soon as they come out, we try to catch them. We're eating dinner usually. Oh, what's this thing? Oh, what is oh. that? Is it a baby doll head? It's a creepy baby doll head. Ooh, that's going our set. Yeah. I'm going to have to, I'll, I'll put some clear paint or something oh, over it to, so it stays together. Oh, but ooh, that's nightmare fuel. I can already hear that creepy kid music. There we go. Oh, creepy baby doll oh. head goes right there. <laughs> I'm just looking at people having a time in their lives in these old photos. What is that? There's also slides. There's negatives. This is really cool. And there's like a, a million slides in here. A baby doll leg? Oh, it's like the Frankenhooker like leg. Like a doll leg? That's funny. We got pieces and parts in the mail. <laughs> There's somebody on this slide waving, like waving goodbye, and they're uh, they're next to an underpass by a river. That might have been the last time they waved goodbye to somebody. Maybe, maybe. Oh, maybe. No. I'm sure it's not. Ooh, there we go. It's that's this one. Me, this is eight millimeter. That's film. just that's just me being grim. <laughs> Building of the skating rink. Ooh. Josie. Wow, we're going to figure out... Oh, cool. So There's some film I can scan. That one I can digitally scan Probably in. this weekend we'll throw it in. Yes, that's awesome. Wow, the Bargain Barons rule, man. Check them out, please. And on a YouTube. box I can reuse. <laughs> check them out as soon as you can on YouTube. It's immediately following our shows, go check out some Bargain Barons episodes. It's, it's your homework. And even over the weekend. Yeah, there you you'll go. You'll get addicted. It's great stuff. So cool, guys. Thank you. Wow. Yeah. Oh, boy. Oh, my God. There's like 800 million... Slides in here. All kinds of pictures. Lordy. Maybe we could use them for some cool project. Oh my gosh. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you guys. The yeah. Target Bears. And oh, we yeah. we have a playlist on our YouTube channel called Rescued Reels where we do scan in um, eight millimeter films and we also digitize uh, found VHS tapes. So like yes, yeah. old commercials and home movies and stuff like that. And there's there's hours and hours to go we, we, we haven't even scratched the surface of the stuff that we have and wiki bobby's asking is there a hangover tonight so yes, yes tonight there will be a hairy scary hangover chat show that's our after show chat show so let's get into the promo stuff grim oh okay that's so, cool yeah, and then sure. we'll get back to the movie oh you're oh, good i'm happy you're long form tonight that's perfect uh let's see stills let's get the stills boom what do we got oh we don't want to see that quite yet there's our Teespring store. Yeah, we don't want to see it. Oh, no? No. Oh, okay. Okay, go on your I was going to do the little spiel. Go ahead. There's tank tops, t-shirts, hoodies, and so much more. It's all there in the Teespring store. Oh. Use coupon code BANANAS <laughs> because those deals are bananas and you get 15% off whatever you decide to purchase in there. We give you a little discount as a little thank you for supporting the show. And speaking of supporting the show, if you're interested in becoming a monster member, tell them how to do it, Janet Decay. Just click the little join button on our YouTube channel, and it's only $2.99 a month, and it uh, you have access to exclusive videos uh, for the channel members. Mostly me naked, no. <laughs> no, none no. of that. That's my not a fan's site. That that's from not a fan. Yeah, but yeah, but yeah. become a monster member if you wish, and uh, I've seen people gift mo these memberships to. Uh, other people in the chat so it uh, makes a great gift yes and so sometimes we put up behind the scenes videos or um like found stuff on yes. there too in all seriousness that's what we do. we try to put out a video or two a week on there that's right and we're trying to get better at this but if you don't get enough mommy the monkey on friday nights you could check out our living the scream podcast yes we didn't yeah we didn't have one this week but no. we'll have one next week for sure yes and then you could check our past podcasts on 
our channel here. That's, that's right. This is where our alter, alter egos uh, do a little uh, talk show on this here set about everything Mummy the Monkey and our reselling adventures. Yes, it goes behind the scenes. So yeah, our Living the Screen podcast is on our YouTube channel, uh, uh, and we're the Mummy and the Monkey on YouTube. That's right. And last but not least, hey, immediately following the Harry Scary Hangout, or a few minutes after, we'll be doing the Mummy and the Monkey's Harry Scary Hangover. Yes, our after show chat show where we talk about uh, different movies and things that we've watched, pop culture stuff, you know, just, just chit chat with y'all. That's right. We'd like to stay up a little bit later for all those night owls that just uh, can't get enough of the show. So we uh, do a more like long, just to kind of chat it up a little more looser type of uh, atmosphere. So lots of fun. So if you want to do that after our movie tonight, movie show, yes. then we'll see you there, right? Oh, yeah. And uh, you got to see a little bit of Summer Wasteland footage that. Uh, uh, you know that we just experienced the little walk last through. couple of walk through and yes. some of the people that were there and uh, there's even more of that coming up and, and right after a fart three so get ready for that so there's more <laughs> convention footage yes. and there's more uh, fun stuff and we have more movie to show so let's get into fart three of scared to death right here on the, the mummy, mummy and the monkeys, monkeys. Harry scary hang out <laughs> <laughs> Hun, don't you want me around to protect you? That indigo guy might... Yes, but who's going to protect me from you? Lily Pat. My wild Irish rose. I just live for the day when I can take you out of all this. When I can slave and, and get you the luxuries in life. Gee, I'd gladly work my fingers to the bone to, to buy you expensive motor cars and furs and, and jewels and, and things and... And serve your breakfast in bed. What's the matter with me? Am I crazy? Yes. And I'd hate to hang by my neck until you got me all those things. Yeah, you might get a little blue in the face. Still and all, all I gotta do is to find myself one slightly murdered body, and I'm in. Stop looking at me. Oh, Lily Beth, sometimes I think I'm not getting anywhere with you. What do you think? I think you've got a good idea there. All right, all right. You'll be sorry someday when you see my picture in the paper. <laughs> Wait and see. Hey, Lily Beth, why don't you answer the doorbell? Maybe that indigo guy wants in. What kind of a person are you? I got white folks in here. The doctor ain't home. You'll have to call some other time. Don't be silly. Uh, don't say I didn't tell you. Close the door on your way out. Hey, wait a minute. Well, if it isn't Bull Raymond. Shh, Terry. You trying to ruin me? Ruin him. Come here, Bull. Meet Miss Carnell. How do you do, I'm sure. Likewise. How do you happen to be out with him? Cute, darling, don't you think? Flat at both ends, head and feet. You've heard me speak of him? Bull Raymond. Bill Raymond, if you please, Mr. Terry Lee, you so-called reporter. How do you happen to be out with a dish like this? Jane Cornell. Good for dull days in a man's life. Mr. Raymond. Oh, yeah, I remember. Terry told me about the time you shot up the dressmaker's dummy. Huh? Yeah, he said you closed in on what you thought was a murderer, but it turned out to be the dressmaker's dummy, and you shot it full of holes while the real murderer got away. <laughs> <laughs> My pal. So this is where you've been hiding after they kicked you off for that fiasco, huh, Bull? Bill, I mean? What are you doing here? Can't a man rehabilitate himself in peace? Here I come, looking for an honest crime around here so I can solve it and get myself back to Central. And you come yeah. along and... Where's the body, Bull? Bill? There ain't no body. That's the trouble. No, no, let's keep it friendly. Friendly? What do you mean? Let's have it. Who killed who and why? Are you kidding? Did somebody get knocked off around here? Look, I don't like to be kidded either. Where is it hidden, Sherlock? Oh, Terry, you've been on the police beat so long that... Uh... Now listen, Bill, you know me well enough to know I wouldn't come out here just for the ride. Not when I could be, um... <coughs> it just so happens there was a call to the police. It came from out here. And I happened to be there when it came through. Miss Cornell happens to be the operator. So she tipped me off. Told me the line had gone dead. So I smell the story, and here I am for an exclusive. You see what I mean? What's in there? 
Well, that's the doctor's consulting room, but there ain't nobody in there. I've been standing here for quite a spell. Open it up. Let's take a look. Welcome in. Bienvenue. Welcome. That's funny. Come on the in. The lights in here ain't almost never out. In you go. Never do that. I could get killed that way. Is that bad? Oh, so nothing's happened around here, huh? It's busted. There, see? <laughs> like I said, there ain't nobody here. Hey, cut it out, will you? You're making me dizzy. Well, sure, somebody stumbled over it and pulled it out of the wall. Could happen anywhere. No! Oh! <gasps> oh! Wants to shake hands with you, Bill. Step right up. Not me. You seen it first. It's alive! Doc! Raven, did you try and kill me? Fuck why, Doc? Why should I do that? You ain't paid me for last month yet. <laughs> How long you been here? Now, let me see. I was going to make a telephone call when... Somebody conked you, huh, Doctor? Then rip the telephone wire out? Yes, I imagine that is about what happened. Who are these people? Well, they're all right, Doc. This is Terry Lee and uh, Miss Cornell from The Times. We don't want any reporters here. Nothing's happened. Look, Doctor, nobody ever wants reporters. But then something happens, and there they are. But nothing has happened. I fell and hurt my head. Oh, I see. Then you got up again, put yourself on the table, and got all nice and pretty in that shroud there. You won't get any story here. And now, if you'll excuse me, I have some work to do. Doctor, do you mind if we stick around for a while? Seeing that nothing's happened, well, uh, why not? Very well, you may stay for a while, but I warn you, if you make yourselves objectionable in any way, I'll have Raymond throw you out. Well, come on, you heard what the doctor said. He's busy. Get out of the office. Probably a pretty nice guy, caught in a tough spot. That's the way I see it. You wouldn't want me to tell him you got kicked out of homicide, would you, Bill, old boy? Shh. Oh, Terry, you're my pal. You know that, don't you? Would I kick you out? You would if you could, Bill. Now, why can't we have a little talk quiet like Sexy that? Sexy time. You just follow me in the parlor over here. Oh, me too, darling, me too. Darling knows everything about everyone, and that's how I learned. Did they? Uh -huh. I just did a discreet lesson. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> Baby, I'm going to miss you an awful lot when I grow tired of you. Now, remember, you're just going to listen. Well, of course, darling. What else do I do when I'm with you? Sit down. Now, as I remember it, there was a singer at the Click Club who called herself Flora Laval. Didn't she marry young Ward hey! a couple years ago? Uh, I don't know nothing about it. Oh, yes, you do. It was just about the same time that you had that affair with the dressmaker's dummy. Oh, uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, now I remember, Terry. You're right. You're right. Uh, she was uh, down to the click club, and it was her that married Ward. Wasn't that on a bed of some kind? This well, lame story he's about to tell well, me? Well, uh, there was a party going on, and uh, somebody dared Ward to ask the singer to marry him. And he thought at the time it was a good gag, and he went along with it. That's right. He got pretty high and then popped the question at her. How romantic. I just love that. Hush, dear. L-I-S-T-E-N. Shut your <laughs> pie hole. Well, that's how it happened anyway. Ward woke up the next morning and found himself married solid. He'd asked her and she'd snapped him up. Oh, and they lived snappily ever after. I don't care. I think it was sweet. Darling, couldn't I get you high sometime? And... Sweetheart, have you ever heard the old saying about little girls? What's that? Little girls should be seen and not heard. Now go on, part of your nose. I think I'll be shoving along, too. I... Now, wait a minute. We're just getting started. We were talking about a singer who called herself Laura Laval. Pushed away into this house for good reasons of her own. Gentlemen, I beg your pardon. Would you like to touch my monkey? I must tell you frankly, I have been eavesdropping. Professor Leonide, this is a reunion. My boy, you must forgive me. You seem to remember me. But I do not recollect you. When was it? What was it? Oh, 
Professor, <laughs> it was a long time ago, and I was a kid up in the balcony in Albany. Yes? When you brought down the house with great feats of ledger domain. Oh. You remember, Professor? That was the night that the box office receipts disappeared, just like magic. Uh, uh, part of the act, my boy. Just a part of the act. <laughs> it's a pleasure to meet one of my useful admirers. Terry Lee of the Central City Times. Oh. The press? Well, it's nice to have known you. Wait a minute, Professor. What's your hurry? Are you afraid I might bring up the subject of those certain unfortunate recent connections of yours? Shut in the dark, my boy, I'm sure. And I will ignore it. Of course. And this young lady, no doubt a companion of yours. Jane Cornell, my fiance. Delighted. Likewise, I'm sure. Delightful. And I would suggest to take very good care of you. Do not go in there. Woo! I haven't had a chance to talk to him yet, Mrs. Van E. Never mind, I'll tell him myself. Darling, I met her upstairs and I told her all about you and that you know everything about everyone. Thank you very much, dear. Welcome to your living room, Mrs. Van E. Thank you, but it isn't my living room. I understand you're not unaware of my position in this house. Well, uh, maybe you can tell us about it. I'm being kept a prisoner here against my will. I'm alone and friendless. I'm sorry. Why haven't you called the police? They've done nothing but to call for the police. They have kept me penniless so that I can't leave. I understand. Really? They're trying to destroy my mind, Mr. Lee. By innuendo and indirection, they're trying to make me believe I've done something dreadful in the past. That I'm to be the victim of some horrible vengeance. You know best about that. I'm innocent, Mr. Lee. I've done nothing. Now, this doctor's brought some stranger here with these tricks and illusions to further make me you believe... You mean the professor and his little, uh... Yes. You must help me, Mr. Lee. Laura, it's so good to see you downstairs again after all these days being locked in your room. You know perfectly well why I've remained locked in my room. Lord, this is Mr. Lee of the Times, the gentleman I told you about upstairs. Oh, yes. Uh, uh, look here, Mr. Lee. We don't want any more of that front page splash stuff such as I got when I married Laura. Your wife's been telling us that she's being kept here under constant threat. She is out of her mind. See what I mean, Mr. Lee? They don't overlook a single chance to put it in my head that I'm crazy. Perhaps I can explain, Mr. Lee. We don't believe there's anything wrong with Laura now. But we are sure something will happen to her mind if she continues to live under this strain. Oh, is that a fact? Just as I told you, they're behind it. Can't I make that clear to you? They spend all their time trying to terrify me. They write me letters and ringing. They send me dummy heads wrapped in green paper. Anything to frighten me so I can't sleep. I can't think. The only thought in my head is that I'm going to be killed. These are very serious charges, gentlemen. And I might say it and make a perfect front page splash. Lee, you could dare print a word about those ravings of my wife. Don't do anything to make me think they aren't ravings, Mr. Vanny. Why do you say things that you know will hurt me? He said to put the blindfold on, and you will know the truth. No! What's wrong with the doc? Quiet, Raymond. You don't mean that she's dead, Raymond. Then I knew that he was here. She's coming out of it, but she's in an advanced state of shock. Maybe necessary to administer a sedative. That's intended to shut her up. I'd like to hear her do some more talking, Doctor. If her mind is allowed to dwell upon what's happened, that may be the breaking point. Well, you've got all the answers. Look here, Lee, I don't like your tone. If you have any insinuations to make, make them to me. Okay, I will. Suppose you and I talk this over downstairs. I don't recognize your right to question me. However, if it'll make you leave father alone, Fix yourself a chair right outside the door and don't leave until I get back. Sure, sure. But what about Lily Beth? Don't she write nothing around here? Now, Lee, first I'd like to see your credentials. You're busting here saying you're a reporter. That's the old turn the tables gag, Vanny, but if it'll make you any happier, take a look. All right, you're a reporter. 
But I still don't understand how you and the young lady got the news about our troubles. Do you really believe that story, Lee? Do you in your right senses really believe that we are keeping Laura prisoner here? That's what the lady says. She said that... Nonsense. Nothing would please me more than if she got out. Look, I don't get any of this stuff, Vanny, but there's a tricky deal going on around here, and I intend to sit in on it. Too bad I can't flash the city desk to make ready for a front-page replay. Yes, isn't it? Either your wife is the victim of a well-plotted program of persecution calculated to drive her insane, or she's the uh, witch you say she is. You're the fellow with the nose for news. What does it tell you? It tells me that right now I'd like to know where your disappearing relative is. What is going on? Get back your phone. What's out there? I have a right to know. Don't see anything. What was it? It isn't possible. It isn't possible, of course. What do you see out there, Lee? I've had enough of this. Come on. Are you nervous, Miss Cornell? Oh, no. I think it's very exciting. Oh, no. I want nothing to do with your voodoo. Well, Professor, I thought I just saw you outside, bang at the moon. Shut up! You disturbed your sleep. You're tired. Where have you been? How about you start acting normally for a change? You're bringing suspicion upon all of us. I, my boy? What have I done? Suppose you tell us. Has no one arranged to silence you yet, Mr. Lee? What a pity. I don't silence very easy, Professor. And it'll take a lot more than what you've done to her. Do you suggest that I had a hand in that poor girl's unfortunate demise. Why don't you behave yourself, Professor? Mr. Van E here has the right idea. You're just coming up the works. I did my humble best. Who are you working for? What do you expect to get out of it? I'm charging a debt, Mr. Lee. A debt contracted many years ago. Now, are you any wiser than you were a moment ago? No, but I'm beginning to get a general idea. By the way, how is that little girl of yours? I hope fervently that nothing happened to her. She would look so beautiful lying here. Look, Professor, I may not have been very smart in bringing Miss Cornell here, but if I thought you had any plan to do that... Why do you persist in making me the villain, Mr. Lee? Holy oh, smoke! Now we will let you be the witness, Mr. Lee. I am here. The sounds came from upstairs, right? Now what are you rehearsing? In there, Terry! In there, it's murder! How's it going? I haven't looked this pretty since I was a baby! Jenny, Jenny, wake up! Wake up! Oh, Terry! It was terrible! It was just terrible! I'll never get over it as long as I live! Everything went black and... Yes? And then it started to talk. What started to talk? I don't know. That thing. Now, look. Let's get back to the beginning. I left you here with Dr. Vanny. Yeah, and then he gave Mrs. Vanny a shot with a long needle. Never mind that. All right. Then he said, would I sit with Mrs. Vanny? OK, OK. Where is she now? Who? Mrs. Vanny. Where did she go? That's just what I asked you, Janie. Well, she was right here. Then Dr. Vanny went out. Then what happened? Well. And Bill Raymond came in. Oh, that's great. The two of you in the same room at the same time. How did you communicate with each other? Sign language? Oh, I don't care. All you do is make fun of me. I didn't ask to come to visit this, whatever it is. Oh, yes, you did, dear. Don't you remember? You said you wanted to see what the life of a reporter was like. Don't forget, Mr. Lee. One must not expect too much of certain types of mentality. Shut up, Bill Raymond. I remember you when you couldn't even make your ex. Oh, I want to go home. We can't go home, darling. We've got to get a story. Why? You don't understand. Yes, I do. Why do we have to get the story? Who cares? Oh, she's got you there. All right. Now, you tell me. What happened to you? Me? Oh, well, you said to stay outside the door, and I pulled up a chair. That's right. She was inside the door, and you were outside. <laughs> do you know you're getting chubby? Come that, that odor of heavenly perfume. That was an early man. 
was sweet and penetrating, like, like an ancient drug. And I felt kind of sleepy like. Oh, so sleepy. Hey, Groovy Ghoulies! My name's Rob. And I'm Karen. And we're the Bargain Barons, and we love running around our city to different garage sales and estate sales looking for antiques and collectibles. Oh my gosh, there's just so many nice things here. Yeah. Oh my god, it's so nice. Hey. Wow, look at this old thing. Oh yeah. And when we're not doing that, we love watching Mummy and Monkey on YouTube and Facebook. They're awesome. Check them out. Hello, stay tuned for more from the Mummy and the Monkey. These two I got done a lot better, so wow. I'm gonna re take these off. I just have them zip tied for right now, but I That's did that on purpose. So if I had to rework it at all, I might see. smooth these out a little more. Dare I say that's pretty sharp? Ooh, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's good, good work. That's very cool. Thank you. I appreciate. Yeah, it. Yeah, good job. Jump, jump off, <laughs> he jumped, oh, wait a minute. Yeah, he jumped off the, of the yeah, heel, and then they had to put it back in reverse. Yeah. Wait a minute. That smooth footed, stupid pot belly jump he made off of that heel. Oh, man. That, that, yeah, that was the most roll. ridiculous thing. Hey, put your foot in the heel down. No, all right. All right, okay. Okay. Bring it back, folks, to the 21st century. You better believe it. We're going to do it right now. Come bring it on. Come on, come on. Come on. One, come on. Two, woo, three. Woo, 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 woo. <laughs> and now, a dramatic reading from Coffin Joe. Don't worry, we're coming back. Whoa. Whoop, 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 whoop. Whoa, what a time. See, if you weren't there, you missed all that. <laughs> you guys are crazy. <laughs> Just hanging out with my homies, that's all. We're having a good time there, you know? It, it was fun. So many different characters, and people are just having fun. Yeah, we got to talk to some people we haven't talked in years. And, that, you know, that the little photo montage, you know, jogging my memory. had, um, oh, uh, oh shoot, uh, Schultz, he standby, stopped by, James mm -hmm. Schultz. And uh, talked with us a little bit. We're going to go try to see him in, a, in, in the coming months. Uh, what else is going on? Hey, people are like laughing, have a good time. Yeah, that was that was a good time. I mean, I love hanging out there. And Marty was there, and mm -hmm. he just... Uh, and yeah, Eric William was there. And Eric he, William he's was got there a YouTube channel also where he interviews uh, filmmakers and stuff yes. like that. He does a wonderful job at interviews. He's a, he's a great interviewer and entertainer, so it was good catching up with Eric, and hopefully mm -hmm. we'll be doing more with him sometime in the future. So uh, love to, uh, like... I, I don't remember his channel name at the moment. So we'll, we'll look all that up. Next next show or something. I guess you could say we really whoop, whoop, whooped it up there at Cinema Wasteland this you year. You did. <laughs> so, yeah, so come on down in October. We can all do that. We could be a group, a group, drive everybody crazy. Probably. That's what we do there. Yeah, we Probably. had a great time. Yeah. <laughs> 
that really, you know, going over that footage just the other day, and I put that together, it really, you know, brought it all back. I'm like, we did have a good time. It, it really was, was fun. It was fun. And a Scream Team releasing, yes. they were next to our booth, and they make some amazing movies. They've got a new movie out called Cryptids. Starring Joe Bob Briggs. Yeah, Joe Bob Briggs is in it, and it's an anthology of, like, you know, the different cryptid monsters. So yeah. it's... You know, a, a you know different filmmakers making different monsters, and I think that's when we're going to put into the <clears> um, into the, into rotation this weekend. We're going to try to watch some uh, other stuff that we bought at yeah, past. Yeah, we still need to see it. <laughs> conventions. There's so much stuff. I got piles of of uh, you know uh, indie movies and all kinds of bizarre releases, all kinds of weird stuff. Oh yeah, I cannot wait to do a little bit of my own personal little our own little wasteland this weekend where we can actually watch stuff. You know, it's going to be cool. So there's um, some more mail to open. Hmm. There's a package here from Jason Licardi. Oh. The artist Jason Licardi. He does comic book art. Rise of Bacardi. Licardi. And there's a... Jason Licardi. Jason Licardi. Yeah, there's a keychain. Um, Tales from the B-Movie Crypt is his comic book. Let me see that. So there's a keychain enclosed. Thank you. Look wow. That. that is neat. Tales from the B-Movie Crypt Part 2. So Ooh. there's his indie comic book. Wait, wait. We have indie movies and indie comics to read this weekend? Yes. Oh. And let's see. Love it. I guess you just look up Jason Licardi Art. L-A-C-A-R-D-I. And correct? that's that's what it looks like there. Uh, Tales from the B-Movie Crypt. Tales from the B-Movie Crypt. And I believe they are available for sale. Oh. <laughs> but we are in here. Where did it go? We turned the cinema boys into a disco. We're on. We're on the back page. Oh, is that like an Ooh. ad they put in there? Yeah, where did it go? It's there right it there. is. Black and white, baby. Yeah, we're on the back page. It's beautiful it. black and white. Cool. Well, thank you for sending that, Jason. And uh, yes, we we wish you good luck with your comic books. Yeah, and, and art. We'll, we'll give it a read this weekend. Yeah, sure. we'll have to look through it. Wow, I didn't Very even know we had cool. that on deck. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. I talked with them uh, last week. We were going to show this last week, but then we had some technical things going on. That's right, and we have some yep. uh, fun stuff coming up. I mean, we're going to do um, what do you do? Yes, and what oh. do you do is coming up next. I think we can do that now. Let's kick it in. We got a big fat what do you do. So and then we'll play the rest of the movie. Then we'll yeah, we'll just finish off, polish off this sucker, choke it down, <laughs> get it get it out of the way. But yeah, let's oh, have boy. a little more fun. Let's keep the fun going with uh, an inst another installment uh, of what do you do. So here we go with the right. uh, beautiful theme song. Here we go. Take it away. What do you do when you're watching the hangout? Do you watch on your PC? Do you watch on your phone, in a group or alone? Send us pics and let us see. What do you do when you're watching the hangout? Does your hairy scary show? <laughs> do you watch with your dog, or do you sleep like a log? Send us pics and let us know, yeah. Okay, we're going to kick off our this installment of What Do You Do with our good friend, Dane Stotzer. And there he goes. Now, this all has to do with the the big uh, eclipse event that happened a couple uh, weeks ago. A couple Mondays ago, if you all remember. If you, I didn't know if you were paying attention, but we did have this once-in-a-lifetime, in-our-lifetime eclipse uh, moment happen. And we were in the... Uh, where they had the totality. Yes, we were yes. in the path of totality, as yes. it were. And uh, our buddy Dean Stotzer and his wife Linda uh, uh, captured the moment right here. They went up to, he had a telescope and actually got a, a, a photograph of it. Look at that. Ooh. So if you didn't get to see, put your glasses on. Oh, I forgot to tell Peter to put the glasses on. <laughs> Before you, oh my gosh, I hope it didn't blind anybody out there. So, so you that's know, a great photo of My it. bad. If you're blind forever from looking at this photograph, I'm sorry. That's a cool yeah. photo. Yeah, that is pretty neat. So thank you, Dane and Linda Stotzer, for that. Oh, wait, it doesn't stop. Here's another picture of Dane Stotzer, who stopped up, like I said, with his lovely wife, Linda, uh, to uh, Cinema Wasteland, and uh, they hung out with us for a little while. And there he is with the shirt he put together. And there's some of the swag he got, a Mars Attacks poster, a Mummy the Monkey Skits uh, Volume 2 DVD, and a few other little trinkets. That's pretty cool. Cool. And, uh, yeah, some people are showing off their bo their Wasteland booty here, so that's going to be a thing. And uh, Speaking of uh, David Phillips, another guy that stopped by, another friend of the show, who stopped by our table and chatted with us. He was actually there all weekend, checking out the movies, hanging out. It looks like he got time to break away and have a, have a stogie. Look at him. Nice. And he's having a cigar, and I think and, and, and he had a good time there. It was good to see him. And there's some of his swag. He got some uh, Tromaville stuff. Some Troma stuff. A nice. Bump, a bump a sticker and a, a couple of flicks. So thank you, David, for sending that in to us. Oh! And look who we have. We have the Vickers. And there's, uh, yeah, the Vickers. Oh, my, what am I, a teenager? My throat, my... 
voice is cracking. From, from Baltimore. Yes. Yes. Baltimore? Yes. Baltimore, yeah. Uh, Vickers stopped by, and it was great to see them. And, uh, yeah, so there's, a, again, the Cinema Wasteland appearance. Thank you guys for yeah, sending Yeah, thanks in. for sending that. Oh, and they are the, they're the Shooks. The Shooks from Florida. All the way from FLA. They used to be around from here, but now they're... They're in, in in the in the uh, in the what they call it the orange state, right? Yes. The, where they grow oranges. They grow oranges yeah. there. But Florida, yes. Um, and uh, they came up to see uh, to hang out, I guess, and see the eclipse. I think they did a little of that too. Cool. If I'm not mistaken. If they didn't, then uh, I'm sure they had a good time just hanging out with us, right? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Thank you, Shooks, <laughs> for that. And then, um, oh, and this is Ricky, Bobby, Sonia. Oh yeah, they said that you needed a lightsaber. Oh, who doesn't? Yeah, you know. So I guess they were playing with lightsaber, say, at, a, at another show or something. Yes, I, I definitely get. I know what I'm going to light my uh, fires with. I could definitely so use that. There you go. Maybe you need a lightsaber. There we go. Thank you. And oh, this was sent in to us that from was, Melinda. Uh, Melinda, she makes uh, models. Melinda sent that in a couple she, weeks ago. So well, I guess she like while she watches our show. You can see us in the background yeah. there, blurry. Making figurines while watching. I could, I could make us out there. I could see cool. us in the background, and she's painting her little. Uh, uh, figurines there. How so fun! Thanks, Melinda, for saying that in. And last but not least, never least, is our buddy Marty, and he sent this in. I guess he's uh, collecting the Mummy the Monkey swag. He's and, got a mug and a and a and a travel mug. And the only thing missing now is my tumbler, and it's next. So that's his next acquisition when he comes sees us, and we'll we'll have one ready for you. Hopefully, that we still we should have them. Who knows? Yeah. But uh, you know, we'll even put one aside for you. How about that? It should be all right. Yeah. Yeah. And that concludes this. Uh, wow, that was a nice chonky. That was a chonky what do you do segment. Of what do you do? But a lot of those were ones that we were going to show last week. And yeah, we they, get they to. piled up. But so yeah, all the all the photos you guys sent in it piled up. <laughs> yeah, but you know you know what there's you know never fret if you ever wanted to send a photograph in of stuff that you do when you watch a show or what your you know uh, area looks like around your television or your mm -hmm. monitor when you watch our show or whatever you're, you some know. people do arts and crafts while they watch yeah. some people cook some people or sleep. Have, have yummy snacks and some people uh, sleep they'll show us their bed and say this is where I pass out when I watch your some show. people have like a projector set up where they watch movies on their projector we and are on so, a tractor when they're mowing their lawns. Things like that. Oh, that one was funny. Or they, they were watching while they were at the dentist. Yes. I mean, if yeah. not, that's kind of crazy. But this is where you can send them. You can email or, or us. Or campfire. At the mummy and the mummy at gmail.com. Yes, the mummy and the monkey. Al yeah. Yes. Uh, and our buddy Albert used to, uh, does, does goes camping and he watches our show on a laptop. So, yeah. The mummy and the monkey at gmail.com. Yes. And, uh, yeah, we could show it on our show in the future. Sure, sure, sure. And now the moment you haven't all been waiting for that you were so, avoiding as long as you could. We have to get to the rest of the movie. We have to get through this uh, turkey of a movie. Every Friday is Thanksgiving here because we have turkey. <laughs> There's always a the turkey time. feast. That's right. We're already serving up a turkey. Anyway, yes, here we go. The, f the fourth and final fart of Scare to Death, starring Bela Lugosi. Oh, these dudes, they keep torturing this poor woman. Oh, I can't wait. To see how it ends. They could have just divorced her. Like, that was a husband in on it or something? They wanted to scare her to death so he could leave her or something? The only way to find out... He could have just divorced her. ...is to watch the final segment of the movie. <laughs> so here we go. All right, let's watch this thing. Take it away, Bella. Part four. <laughs> Professor Leonard. You think so? Come on, get outside. Who, me? Yes, you. I can't go out there with Jane in here. Well, why can't I stay inside and watch and you go outside? Oh, that's great. You'll watch the way you did upstairs. Now, do you want that guy to get away? Yes. Standing there shaking in your boots. Aren't you ashamed of yourself? No. Well, you should be. Go on, Bill. This is your one chance to rehabilitate yourself. Wish I'd never even heard of the word. Gun ready. What good is a gun against what's going on around here? How do you do? Gee, this ain't natural. Who are you talking to? The woman I love. Poor little angel. Try and speak to me. She can't hear you. What 
was you doing outside? You're supposed to be dead. <laughs> I gotta catch that guy in the shrubbery. Oh, gee. What are you doing to me, Lily Beth? I got work to do. Lily Beth, be reasonable, will you? If you don't cooperate, I'll never get back to Central. Never mind, Raymond. Take care of Lily Beth. Lily Beth! Yeah. That's who it was. I opened the door and she fell right in my arms. Like she had something special to tell me. You notice that fragrance about her? And to think this wilted flower was once even as you and I. Take her back into Dr. Van E's office. What's she doing wandering around? She's supposed to be a corpse. What happened to that guy outside? Never mind. You found her. I never knew she was lost. I missed her. I missed her from my office. Will you please take her back? What are you going to do? Yes, Doctor, and what have you been doing? We've turned this house upside down trying to find you. Hardly that, young man. If you'd done that, you would have found me. Now, Raymond, we can't allow this girl to remain in this condition any longer. But what can you do? She looks like a perfect stiff to me. You! In my office. Oh, Doctor, this may not be any news to you, but your daughter-in-law has disappeared. Oh, how dreadful. But let us say somewhat overdue. Hey, Mr. Lee? You don't seem very surprised to hear about it. Young man, when you've been devoutly praying for something to happen, you accept your good fortune without question. We thought that probably you might be able to throw some light on the subject. That's right, Raymond. Leave her there. There's absolutely nothing wrong with her. Huh? And you mean I've been pining away for nothing? She was put in a deep hypnotic sleep, that's all. But why? Why, Doc? Who done it? It was done so that she would obey certain orders that were transmitted to her. Oh. If that's true, then why did you declare her dead? I had my own good reasons. Would you give me one reason why you like to go around getting hit on the head? That must become a little monotonous. Mr. Lee, are you sure that you saw what you thought you saw? Well, I'm not blind. I might be getting a little dizzy in this madhouse. Mecca lecka high, mecca hiney ho. Nice girl, but about as sharp as a sack of wet mice. You know, Doctor, morning isn't very far off. And when the police get here, you've got an awful lot of explaining to do. You're in this up to your neck. By morning, let us hope no explanations will be necessary. Everything will have explained itself. Booyakasha! Poor little sleeping beauty. Do you suppose someone thought she looked weak-minded and picked her out to carry out his commands? Well, that's not always the case, Raymond. If Leah and I were here, we could settle this case very quickly. Gentlemen? Oh, you again. It is my peculiar misfortune to always be in a position where I may eavesdrop. How can I be of service, Cousin Joseph? Oh, Professor. Ask me no questions, my friend, and I will tell you no lies. Leonard, you could undo certain mischief that has been done this girl. I know you can help if you will. I could, my dear Joseph. But I will not bring down the wrath of the unknown madman who is loose about these premises. It is a matter of self-preservation. I had nothing to do with hypnotizing this girl. I have an idea that she may have already carried out the unknown's orders and that he no longer needs her. Nevertheless, my dear Joseph, you must excuse me. Just a minute, Professor. I wonder what would happen, Professor, if in connection with your sudden reappearance here, somebody dug up the old story of why you swindled Dr. Vanny and then ran off and let him take the rap. I will not be blackmailed, Mr. Lee. And I observe again that you're a young man who knows too much for his own good. And I would also like to know where you obtained all this information. It's none of your business. You're extremely young to have your fingertips on events of 20 years ago. I have a memory like an elephant. I never forget something once I hear it. I'm a sharpie, Professor. As every one of you will admit before morning. Now, Doctor, I'd like to bore you with a few questions. All righty. I wouldn't mind, young man, if you had the slightest idea of what you were looking for. 
Maybe if we start back to the time around midnight, when you administered what you call a sedative to your daughter-in-law. Are you inferring that I had anything to do with Laura's disappearance? Why do you keep evading the issue, Doctor? You know you'll have to confess when the police get here anyway. I would remind you, young man, that you're making a direct accusation. And I refuse to answer. Look, I want the facts and I want them now. Let's cut out the mulberry bush routine. Listen, Bill, you're supposed to be a cop and you want to get back to homicide. Help me make the doctor loosen up. He knows a lot more than he's telling. Well, sure, I'll help, Terry, but first let's get Lily Beth out of this. Maybe she can tell us something. Yes, Mr. Lee, it seems to me that you're not too anxious to have Lily Beth restored to consciousness. <laughs> What do you hear, Doc? Her heart's in a very depressed condition. Someone's been giving her orders by mental telepathy. Hey, could I learn to do that? Supposing Lily Beth was in the kitchen, could I telegraph her a wish for a cup of coffee? Huh? What's wrong with Perhaps, you? Perhaps, Raymond, someday when we have a little time, I'll indicate the principles of hypnosis to her. Oh, Maria and Joseph. The principle of hypnosis isn't as simple as you would make them believe. It requires a long and patient study. But I will risk the rest of the unknown. For I see you truly love this child. And for your sake, for your sake, I shall use my knowledge. Oh, gee, thanks, Professor. You're solid. Don't mention it. Oh, boy, I did not let them. What are you slapping me for? Professor, put her back to sleep. It's better that way. What have you been doing to me? Me? What have I been doing? Yes, what have you been doing? You've got to learn me that hypnotism trick. It's my only chance. Tell me, Lily Beth, what happened? Well, I, I can't seem to remember it. It all seems like a dream. Did you see anyone? No. But I do remember a perfume, a sweet odor. Yes, yes, go on. Yes, Jane. What is it? Is it Halloween? No, it isn't. Then why was that green face bobbing up at the window? What? Yeah, a green face just like the one I saw in Miss Van E's room. You saw a green face in Mrs. Van E's room? Well, yes, darling, that's what she was shooting at. I mentioned it to you, but you're so scatterbrained. Yes, dear, I'm scatterbrained. Does your mind feel rested now and everything after your nap? Mm-hmm. That's a good girl. Now, come on, tell me, what happened? Oh! Don't yell at me. I can tell you just how it happened. We were alone in the room, and Laura was going to sleep. And then she said, oh, take away the bandage. And I said, what bandage? And then she said, oh, don't shoot me. I didn't mean to do it. I dope you ding bad with you. The room got awfully black. I think somebody must have turned off the lights. Just like that. Go ahead, you're doing fine. Well. Yeah, the lights had already gone out. Uh-huh. And the room got awfully dark. You've already said that. And Think hard now. You saw a green mask. It came out of the wardrobe. Like a moth? Yes, darling, just like a moth. Oh, how clever of you. It was just like a great big moth, and it flew around and Please around don't around make yourself any dizzier than you are. Now tell me the rest of it. Well, I just don't see how you could remember that it was like a great big moth. Did you see it? Were you there hiding in the wardrobe, maybe? No, I wasn't in the wardrobe. Now, look, Jane, please, be yourself. No, I mean, don't be yourself. Just relax. Relax. Mr. Lee. Yeah, well, this is so stupid. Just a moment. Where were you? Were you upstairs? No, I was down here talking with your son. And by the way, where is he? Here I am, Mr. Lee. What can I do for you? Oh, good heavens. Can you stop it? Yes, I was listening outside the door. You haven't answered my father's question yet. Oh, come on, take it easy, take it easy. Maybe you can tell us where you've been, Mr. Vanny. Of course, you don't know anything about your wife's whereabouts. Oh, go on, tell him where she is. I want to go home. I'm hungry. Shut up! Oh. Ah, quiet, everybody, quiet! Laura! Don't. No, don't. Don't. We are a classy bunch. 
He's under a hypnotic spell. Ladies and gentlemen, it has been an exciting night, and you all are deserving of some explanation and relaxation for the strange goings-on. The guy who's doing the talking is behind the wall somewhere. Now you're getting smart, Sherlock. We introduce at this time the team of Lorette and Rene, as they appeared at the height of their success in the green room of the Paris Creole. I am a barfly. Sure. The mask. The picture. Mademoiselle Lorette. Now I know who she is. Mademoiselle Lorette will now put a bandage over her eyes. The better to see the inner truth. Very good, René. Very good. Just like the old time. Would any member of the audience like to ask Mademoiselle a question? Come, Mr. Lee. You have been so full of questions up to now. I'm thinking, brother. We cannot keep Mademoiselle too long in this delicate mental balance. She has been under a great strain lately. Then I will ask the questions myself. All right. Yes, Rene, I'm at your command. Are you afraid now? No, I'm quite safe. Will you tell the truth? Yes. They came to me and said your partner, he of the magic feats and rare impersonations, is a spy. But we can't prove it. We will give you a million francs if you, Lorette, bring us that proof. Ah, now we shall know. You gave them the proof they wanted? Yes. They took him away to be killed? Yes. What was he to you, this man you betrayed? This man you sold to the enemy for money? He was my husband. When they told you he was to be executed, you sent this man a gift for his last moment before the firing squad. What was it? Peanut butter. It was a green scarf for his eyes. Like the one you're wearing now? Yes. Why did you send it? It was my scarf. I wanted him to know I had betrayed him because I hated him. Well, isn't that special? He was good and kind. But I hated him for the power he had over me. I see. That is your only defense you hated. You thought they shot him. You escaped to America. You thought you were safe. Then you found out he was alive and wanted revenge. Thank you, Mademoiselle Lorette. You may remove the bandage now. What do you see on the cloth, Mademoiselle? I don't know. There's a hole in it. Yes. What else, Lorette? What else? There's blood on it. There's blood. I have come back. I am here, and I will have my revenge. No! No, don't touch me! Ah! Outside, under the window, you know where. That's it, man. Game over, man. It's game over. Yes, he had his revenge. Ah! He's been living in the that he'd find her. Just a minute, lady. You ain't going no ways. Well, if it ain't Mrs. Williams, come along with me. Come on, come on. You want me to slug you? Get inside. Hey, Terry, Terry, come in. Get a load of this. There's your man. <laughs> At last, I caught me a murderer. <laughs> You're wrong. I never laid a hand on her. Hey, my boy, you kept your promise to me. You said you wouldn't touch her. But she's dead, ain't she? And you ain't going nowhere till we find out what killed her. And you, Professor, you know too much for your own good. I'm holding you, too. Now you're getting smart, Bill. Well, Professor, I see you two know each other. Yes. René was my assistant. I taught him everything he knows. He went out for himself and became a success. Later, we met in a concentration camp. And here we are. A small world, Mr. Lee. Small world, indeed. You look more like a woman every time I see you. Terry, isn't this the place where you get the marriage licenses? No, dear, this is the morgue, the morgue. Oh, darling, you say the cutest things. The morgue? Oh! Now, never mind, dear, you just stay right here, nobody will get you. Shut your What's big this? yapper! Well, Doctor, got anything to add to my story of the year? No. Who's this Rene? Rene was her husband. She turned him over for a sum. Figured the Nazis would take care of him, but he had ideas of his own. Look, Doc, was it murder? Do I finally get a break? Was she murdered? We're sending the report to the police. What was it saying? Ah, oh, come on, Doctor, don't hold out on us. 
I didn't understand it at first, but I do now. There were no marks of violence on the body, and we found no internal disturbances. What does this all add up to, Doctor? Yes, let's have it. She was literally scared to death. Dawn, that's the end. Well, shut the bed. You're watching The Mummy and the Monkeys, Harry Scary Ham. <laughs> Ready? There we go. There we go. Here, let me do this. Yay! It's over! Yay! Yeah. Woo! Finally, <laughs> we got through the movie. They clap for the wrong reasons on this one. Yeah, but hey, there you go. I don't. Did you under scared to death? Did you understand anything that went in that movie? They scared her to death, and <sighs> they made up all this crazy storyline stuff. Psycho babble about this. And, I don't know. I don't and even babbling know what about things and. Uh, it's um, like Bela okay. Lugosi was in it. Bela like, Lugosi was wearing his Dracula cape, and, and that said? was what, what that, was that made the movie. But what was he doing? He's always doing something. He's always doing something magicals. He's doing magicals. He's doing magicals all the time. Yeah, the guy's like a voodoo, so, yeah, <laughs> vampire, magician, whatever the heck he is. I don't know. But anyway, there you go, scared to death. <laughs> Woo we got through it. But and uh, some people were saying the movie should be bored to death. That's what I said. Oh, is that what you said? Yeah, really, I did say yeah, it should oh, be called okay. bored to death. But um, don't worry, the best part. Of the, well, hopefully, hopefully it's not the best part of the show. But something exciting <laughs> when the movie's up. over. Yeah, well, it, well, then that, well, then that, then that, that's when it's the best when this whole thing's over. But we have the prize giveaway coming up. We do have the prize giveaway coming up, but we also have there was one more box of fan mail. Oh. But I think we're going to save them as prizes for future Harry Scary shows. Ooh. From so David Hayes sent us um, a box of, oh, that's right, yeah. of some goodies. Let's and save I, that for next show. We'll save it for a couple shows from future now. Future show, yeah, for yeah. future giveaways. Fun stuff. But thank you, David. Yeah, thank you, David, for sending for that. For sending us that, yeah. yeah. And everyone who sent us stuff uh, for the past couple weeks, thank you so much. Pretty cool. And we truly appreciate it. And Yeah, uh, thank you, guys. Just to show you how much we appreciate you. I think it's about time now to give, do the prize giveaway. Oh, my, Without, my, uh, I told you. I caught mirror fell over. Yeah, we have. <laughs> I haven't paid the the more the rent for this month yet. Don't break everything. Okay. So there is the uh, mummy mask, Ooh. and that is supplied to us thanks to Toxic Tunes. Yes, designed by Toxic Tunes designed himself. Designed by Toxic Tunes. Eric Pigors, yes. the man, the myth, the legend. Look how cool. Yeah, it's and super it's, cool. It's a it's a vac form type of mask with a you know a uh, with the string elastic, on the back. Elastic. That uh, would look cool on someone's wall. Yeah. And it was made by Trick or Treat Studios. Ooh. But uh, yeah, Eric, cool. that's Eric's creation. Yes, very neat. And we have one on our set here, as you can see behind Janet the whole yes, show. Yes, yes, right here. We have the creature from the, the black Lagoon wearing it. is wearing this mask. So yeah, toxictunes.com. And then, okay, so I wrote down all your names yes. in my big shiny mummy bucket here. Yes, they are ready to be pulled. And my mummy bucket is full. So I wrote down all the names from the YouTube chat of people chatting and commenting on the movie. I don't know where my sound effect thing went, but okay. Oh, it went away? That's okay. Oh, it's, it's okay. That's all right. So everybody, let's, you know, let's get up. You that's know. not going to stop us from doing uh, shaking your buckets, yes. is it? Okay. Hold on, I don't want to trip on bubble wrap. Well, that'll be funny. Here. That'll be great. No, 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 that wouldn't actually. Okay, you ready? <laughs> now it's right. time, let's, folks. Let's uh, shake up the bucket here. Stand up and shake, shake, shake. Ba -da 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 -da. Shake, 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 shake. Shake, shake my your bucket. bucket. Da -da -da -da. Shake, shake my bucket. bucket. Da -da -da -da. Oh, you got a big... Oh. Okay. I'll tell you. Got a what? Nothing. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'll talk to you later about it. Oh, okay. <laughs> Uh-oh. All right. Let's uh, pick a winner here. Stir them up. People are uh, applauding you, and I think someone, it's like somebody's throwing a dollar into the... <laughs> no, no, you can't do that here. No tips. All right. And the winner of tonight's prize giveaway is... Jonathan Jackson. Hey, Jonathan Jackson. All right, congratulations. Jonathan Jackson, congratulations. You win this bodacious. You are the prize, prize. winner. That's wow, right. and what a prize! That is, is really awesome. Cool. 
That is so cool. Excellent. Excellent. Okay, so we're going to get that out to you. And all he has to do is what? When you email us, just email us the mummy and the monkey at gmail.com to claim your prize. Jonathan Jackson. That's right. The prize winner and uh, we the will... winner of the night. And then we will get that sent out to you. How cool. Yes, it's a, that's but you right. Know, you guys are all winners to us. You're all amazing. Um, thank yes. you for, you know, sending us the, the fun pictures, the fan mail, yeah. for commenting in the YouTube chat. And just, yeah, just for and, being and on the... If you're watching this later on broadcast television, thank you for joining us. Yeah, it's and always a pleasure, you know? Yeah, we're, we're just glad that you enjoyed it. Well, it's time to put the Barber Papa to bed for this episode, but don't mm -hmm. fret. We're going to come back in a few minutes and do uh, a hairy, scary hangover. So if you're uh, into it, then come on and join us. So give us about five, six minutes or ten minutes or so, and we'll be yep. back right here on this YouTube channel. Yep, and we'll be back for our after show chat show, the Harry Scary Hangover, on our YouTube channel. So, all right, so for now, good night, good fright, everybody. Mwah! That's right, and as I like to always say, we'll see you later. Alligators. <laughs> <laughs> bye bye. Boop.